uh, welcome to California. Um, and thank you to Jane and the TRB and Bryant um, and Stanford for inviting me. Truly an honor to be here and I appreciate it. Um, Stanford, the farm. Bryant, I heard they're a little smart here. Is that, is that true? <laughs> a lot of smart folks here. But what a beautiful setting. Um, I, uh, I wanted to welcome you to California, but I also wanted to talk about what we're doing within California with autonomous vehicles, particularly from a regulatory standpoint. Um, I'm the deputy director with the DMV, and we're involved in it, um, again, from a regulatory standpoint, and I wanted to just talk about, first, the state in general, and then also talk about the activities that we are undertaking in autonomous vehicles. So, with California, um, we're big. Um, that's overstating the obvious. If you uh, just take a look at the numbers, we have, what, 38 million people within, um, within our state. That's about 12% of the population of the United States reside here. Um, we're about the size of the entire New England states, including New York and part of Pennsylvania. And so you, we, uh, we encompass a, a large part of our, um, of our country. We have a lot of variety in terms of our landscape, the beaches, the mountains, the forests, the, uh, the deserts. And so we have a lot of different terrain. And um, we have over 172,000 public road miles. A lot of roads, a lot of people that are on those roads. We have uh, over 25 million driver licenses and ID cards. And the vast majority of those people commute to work alone. So our roads, we have a lot of roads, and we have a lot of people on those roads. We have over 32 million registered vehicles in our state, so we have quite a few. And, you know, over 323 billion vehicle miles traveled. So we have a lot of people, a lot of roads, a lot of different terrain, and a lot of vehicles in there. So we're ripe for a lot of the testing that needs to be done with autonomous vehicles. And so with that, about a year ago, our legislature passed Senate Bill 1298. And SB 1298 authorized the DMV to develop regulations on two fronts. One, to allow for the manufacturer testing of vehicles on our public roads. And secondly, to allow for or to have regulations for the operation of those vehicles on our public roads. And that put the onus on our department, on the DMV, to develop those regulations. And we have never done that before. I mean, we have developed regulations, but we haven't dealt in the field of autonomous vehicles. So this was something new for us. And we're learning as we move forward. We've been working very closely with some of you in the room, some of your organizations, and we're coming up to speed to develop those regulations. I mean, typically these were done at the federal level and not at the state level. California was one of three states to have legislation passed to allow for these types of regulations and um, uh, testing of the vehicles, Nevada being uh, the other state and then Florida being the third. So the, uh, the regulation itself, SB 1298, was specific in a certain, in a number of things. Uh, one of them was, it was specific in some of the items that are necessary for manufacturer testing of those vehicles. So that it had a provision for financial responsibility, insurance that needed to be carried for, um, to be allowed to, to test the vehicles. The other was the operation of the vehicles while they are testing, needed to be done by employees, or contractors, or someone designated by the, uh, by the organization that has the autonomous vehicle. And then the other specif specified item was that the operator or the driver needed to be in the driver's seat and needed to be able to take full control of that vehicle. It also specified, the bill also specified some items for operation by the public and, uh, or operation of the vehicle on our public roadways. Uh, for that to happen, the manufacturer of the vehicle needed to meet certain standards, and you can see them up on the, on the screen. There needed to be um, 
the, again, the insurance needed to have been tested, and then it needed to, to show that it met certain requirements uh, that would be defined by, uh, by the department. So, as I said, this was typically done at the federal level. NHTSA typically took on the, um, the regulations for uh, safety items in, in the industry. Um, so as we are embarking upon this, one of the things that we decided was we needed to partner with NHTSA. We also needed to partner with a number of our sister agencies in developing this. But more importantly, we needed a strategy on how we were going to meet the deadline for developing these regulations. The deadline was January, not was, it is <laughs> January 2015. So we have a year and a half from now to develop those regulations. So how are we going to do it? We're going to break it up into two separate regulatory packages. Uh, the first one is aligned with the, the first item I spoke to earlier, and the second was the overall operation. So the first one is to allow for the manufacturer testing. And uh, the second is for the operation of the vehicles. We also embarked upon forming a statewide steering committee of our sister agencies that would be that would have a stake in autonomous vehicles being operated within the state. And we also formed several working groups to actually do the work in developing the language of the regulations and to point out certain items that the department needs to be aware of as we develop those regulations. The other item that we're doing is we're developing, some con uh, developing a contract for consulting services and then we're also holding public hearings as part of the regulatory process. And I'll speak to each one of these um, on other slides. So, as I said, two regulatory packages. The first dealing strictly with the testing by the manufacturers. The second dealing with the operation. What we envision in the first package is um, submission of proof of insurance or financial responsibility pursuant to what is contained in the, um, in the regulation. Uh, another point is we're going to, uh, it's, it's an internal, uh, it's an inside baseball thing. We're marking the database of, marking our database um, that that particular vehicle is an autonomous vehicle. Um, and then any other feasible regulations that we could put in by the deadline that we've imposed. Uh, we're targeting finishing this by the end of the calendar year so that we would have the regulations in place that manufacturers could um, look towards as they move forward with their testing on our public roadways. The second regulatory package is much more involved, and that's the one that has the operation of the vehicles within the state. Uh, it'll have testing requirements. Um, we'll look at some safety standards. Um, we'll have the requirements for licensing the operator of the vehicle. We'll also have any other type of requirement to register the vehicle within the state and any other feasible items that we think should be put in in time for the January 2015 deadline. And so we're working towards and we hope to, well, not we hope we will meet that deadline in, uh, in completing those regs. We also have the, the authority to be able to promulgate other regs past 2015 if it's necessary. So we're looking at this as, as a starting point and having those regulations in place by 2015 is what we are, uh, we're marching towards. Our statewide steering committee is made up of, as I said, the agencies that have a stake in autonomous vehicles and you see them up there, it's of course the DMV. Our law enforcement arm, the California Highway Patrol, our California Department of Insurance, Caltrans, um, our transportation agency, and the Office of Traffic Safety, and then at the federal level, we have NHTSA involved as well. The steering committee meets quarterly and uh, or as necessary. Uh, we just completed our meeting uh, two months ago, and we have another one that's being calendared for the latter part of August may go into September. And so we, um, we're working fast and furious. We have uh, the uh, steering committee fully engaged in this and a lot of the items that come up in the discussions are items that pertain particularly to their area of expertise. For example, law enforcement, 
Uh, there are a number of issues that come up in our discussions, and we have to take that into account as we develop those regulations. Uh, working groups are made up of the subject matter experts from each one of those different sister agencies. So the, the people with the expertise in insurance or in transportation um, are uh, formed, they are meeting, and they're working to flush out a lot of the items, feeding it into the language for the, uh, for the regulations. We also have a contract with UC Berkeley uh, to, to help us develop some of the standards, particularly for that second set of regulations, the operation by the public. Um, and then we will be holding public hearings, formal public hearings, as well as um, public workshops as we develop these regulations. We've already held two public workshops um, where the public is invited, special interest groups are invited, the manufacturers are invited to, uh, to come in and provide us with input on what we need to consider as we develop these regulations. We found that these have been very, very helpful to us because as I said, this is something new for us and it's, it's uh, virgin territory that we are exploring. And so it's very beneficial to have all of you participate in these workshops and provide us the information that we would require to develop good regulations. Um, challenges. As we move forward, we're finding a lot of different challenges that need to be addressed. And I've listed them uh, here that, we've, that we see. Um, and this isn't to say that the department is taking on the challenges, um, but it is one that the department recognizes needs to be addressed. And we need to determine who needs to address them and how they need to be addressed. But certainly the first is the definition. Uh, NHTSA came out with their, with their policy statement as well as what their, uh, what their levels of automation um, are defined to be. SAE has their levels of automation and um, slightly different. Uh, we need to work towards, we need to see what actually happens in terms of a definitive um, level and then how those levels relate to the regulations. Um, you know, a number of different technologies are currently on the road and as we develop the regulations, we need to be very mindful not to, um, to tamper or to, to slow down innovation. Our main focus is on public safety. We want to ensure that the motoring public is safe, uh, but at the same time, we want to ensure that we don't stand in the way of autonomous vehicles moving forward. Uh, safety, again, is a, is a big issue. Liability, privacy, and security are huge issues that we see with autonomous vehicles. Um, but as the DMV, we're, we're evaluating now whether or not that falls under our purview or whether or not that's another governmental agency that needs, needs to take on that role. And that's one of the things that the steering committee needs to uh, be involved in. And, uh, and we need to make that determination as we, uh, as we move forward. Uh, the reliability of these vehicles needs to, be, needs to be looked at. How do we ensure that these vehicles um, are in good working order? and that they operate that the, the way they're supposed to operate and they do so safely? And how do we ensure that that remains the, the case as it moves forward, as these vehicles age? And so as the regulatory body, we're looking at uh, whether or not to, uh, to have in our regulations something that speak to the reliability of these vehicles and how would we ensure that? Obviously, licensing of the operator is something that's right up our alley. And then the insurance issues. So all of these are issues that uh, need to be dealt with. And all of these are issues that the working groups, the, uh, the breakout sessions that you all will be participating in today are going to be discussing. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting time and one that I, you know, I, I don't like to speak in hyperbole and, you know, I hear the this is a game changer. This is something that is a fundamental change. You hear that all the time in technology. In autonomous vehicles, it's true. I think this really is going to be a game changer. It's going to change the way that we fundamentally operate as a society. And it's exciting. It's one that we are, we at the DMV are very excited about because we get to be part of this. We get to be part of this, this new wave of, of technology that you all are involved in. 
And, um, and we are very, um, like I said, excited and happy to be part of the process. So with that, um, I'm not, do I take questions? I'll take questions now if that's the, uh, the format. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll address any questions that you all have. Yeah, I'm Stan Young with the uh, University of Maryland and applaud the effort that California is doing moving forward. Um, a couple issues in the news lately just on, you know, not so incredibly high-tech innovations in transportation, that of car sharing, electronic car sharing, running into roadblocks with L.A., San Francisco about, you know, what, what's allowable as far as competing with, with uh, you know, for higher services. I mean... First, are you involved in those? And second, do you, do you envision similar conflicts with established, you know, for higher businesses as, as this technology moves forward in California? Yeah, I think you're, re are you referring to the, um, the, the uh, car rental um, issue? Right, that, you know, we're, we're very much at the, at the state level and those are more um, local government issues that, uh, that they've taken on. Um, as, far as, as, as far as we're concerned, relative to autonomous vehicles, um, you know, as we develop the regulations, it's very much uh, at the state level. We will be uh, involving local governments in terms of making them aware of what these regulations uh, entail, but certainly not to the standpoint of um, the level that you brought up with regard to the, uh, the rental car uh, issue. Is on? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm uh, Tyler Folsom from uh, Quest Integrated. Um, you mentioned licensing issues. Do you foresee an endorsement required for autonomous vehicles? And why would there be any special licensing required to sit in an autonomous vehicle that's going to be driving itself? Okay, that's a good question, right? There's, um, th there are different levels of, the, uh, of automation, um, as, uh, for example, as the NHTSA levels. Uh, all the way up to level three, uh, the operator um, has not ceded full control of the, uh, of the vehicle. Um, in level four, theoretically, it's one that can drive itself without any human intervention. Right. In, in all of those, we are very concerned about the safety uh, of the motoring public, and we need to have some modicum of control and some um, reassurance that the, the operator, the person in the vehicle, is able to take control of that vehicle at, a, at the appropriate time. I, I think that level three would be a dangerous situation that would require something like a professional uh, truck driver's license, and level five would perhaps not require any endorsement. That's right. We're, we're um, looking at that model. Uh, we're looking at um, the items that we feel would be necessary for the operator to be able to maintain the, uh, the ability to take control of the vehicle. Okay. So two questions. The California Vehicle Code says that if a person with a disability, which might otherwise block them from driving, shows up at the DMV with a vehicle which can allow them to drive, it's normally uh, written for people who, for example, need hand controls and so on. Um, what would you consider doing if a person with a vision impairment <clears throat> showed up with a vehicle that allowed him to safely drive with such an impairment? Yeah, that's, um, you know, that's a good question again. And um, we don't have the answer at this point. I'm going to look to the back of the room with, uh, with the DMV folks to see if, uh, if I get this wrong. Brian, you, <laughs> you correct me. But that's certainly something that we need to fully analyze before we come up with what those requirements are going to be and how that changes. Um, we certainly aren't at the point to, to make that decision yet. We're, we're doing the research. We're trying to determine what would be feasible um, to, um, to put into place. And on the policy level, what are your goals for normalization across states? I'm sorry? On the policy level, what are your goals for normalization across states? Just going to leave that to the feds? No, you, we have to work very closely with NHTSA on that because we certainly, no one, no one wants a patchwork of, you know, 50 different regulations. Um, and so we really need to ensure that all that NHTSA at the federal level and the states that are currently involved are all working together to ensure that we, got, we have commonality throughout. Okay. Hi, I'm John Niles from the Center for Advanced Transportation and Energy Solutions in Seattle. 
wonderful that California is going to keep the state safe. Uh, about stifling innovation, I understood that there are perhaps a dozen or more autonomous vehicles already being tested on the road in California. Are you expecting, uh, while you develop regulations, to have to intervene and companies that might want to you know, do what's already being done? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if a dozen or a dozen different companies are, <laughs> are currently testing, but um, uh, we have been and we continue to do so, um, work with those, with the companies that um, uh, are not just within California. And, and the industry is, is changing, right, from very much a, a bricks and mortar manufacturing industry to very much more software engineering. And so what a better place to hold it than right here in the heart of Silicon Valley. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, presence by the automakers here within California. We've been visiting with them, we've been meeting with them, we've been learning about what, um, what their plans are as, as far as what they can share with us and, um, and working very closely with them to, um, so that we understand. We understand their industry, we understand what, um, what they're doing so that again, we can craft those regulations um, in, a, uh, in a way that would maintain safety but also allow for, uh, for innovation. Lewis, my name is Lewis Merlin from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, my understanding of the NHTSA policy statement is that they feel like uh, it's, it's, it's not ready for, for operator, I mean, that, they say that, they're not ready for, for non-professional you know, or non-technical uh, operators yet, but you have a mandate to, to authorize such users by 2015, so I, so, and you're in dialogue with them, so I was wondering how this policy statement has influenced the development of your uh, regulations. Yeah, we're, um, we're kind of in a pickle, right? <laughs> we, um, uh, like I said, we have been working with them. Um, they, uh, we realize that uh, the technology, while the technology is here, level two is, uh, is going to be for sale by a number of different manufacturers. Uh, level three is uh, for all practical purposes being tested. Level four is some, some ways off, right? And yet we have to craft the regulations to, to, um, to accompany or to cover all of those. Um, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> so thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Dan Bartz with uh, Booz Allen Hamilton. I work with uh, the United States Army TARDEC on uh, automated uh, vehicle technologies. And uh, my question deals with looking at the commercial trucking side of, of you know, what you're doing with regulation. There have already been some international on-road testing of large truck platoons, like in, in Europe, on-road with other cars. And we've been talking with other states about um, what safeguards are needed to test trucks safely? You know, is it specific roads? Is it specific markings? And how do you do that? Has California looked at or planning on looking at um, rules for testing of larger, you know, class six through eight trucks? Yeah, we've, um, let me just, so I understand your question. Are you, are you asking about the road train concept or are you asking more specifically about autonomous trucks? Uh, the testing that has been done has typically been the road train, but the Army is looking at that and beyond that. Yeah. So we've, uh, we've discussed the, uh, the possibility of, um, of trucks, uh, autonomous trucks being tested. We've discussed that uh, and we continue to do so. We haven't, we haven't come up with any definitive um, answer yet with regard to whether or not our regulations are going to, to cover that. Um, it's certainly something that we have, um, like I said, we've talked about. Um, we've got our hands full just with the vehicle, with the, with the passenger vehicles right now. And so, um, but it's not something that we're, we're ignoring. One last question. Okay. Uh, Barry Peckless, uh, Transport Canada. That's a great segue into my question because I was going to ask about classes of vehicles, but I think you've indicated right now you're focusing on light duty vehicles, not the heavy duty side. But I'm wondering about classes of drivers in the transit world and in the trucking world, we have professional drivers that go through training and have to continually keep their mm -hmm. training skills up to date. Do you see a kind of graduated licensing scheme where certain professionals might have access to this technology before the general public? Right, we've, um, again, 
that's, uh, that's an idea that we've tossed about in terms of the licensing of the operator about what type of training they need to have, what type of um, relevancy that training needs to, um, uh, what type of currency, I should say, that training needs to have. Um, and uh, it's certainly something that we're discussing. Now, it's not going to be part of that first set of regulations. Obviously, it'll be part of the second set. Um, and that's the, a that's the more substantive one. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Oh, thank you for having me.